I think we can all agree that there are a lot of stars in the night sky that you can see with your naked eye. It's around 3,000 or so. Of course, it depends on how good your eyesight is and how clear it is outside. But at the limit of human vision and the most cleanest, absolutest, darkest night sky you can possibly imagine, you're going to see about 3,000 stars in the sky. So there's 3,000 on one side and 3,000 on the other side of the Earth, around 6,000 visible stars to just the naked eye in the night sky. The furthest star we can possibly see is, it's kind of hard to calculate because it depends on the person. Uh, some stars change their brightness with time. Do you count binaries or not binaries? Somewhere around five to 10,000 light years away is the very, very furthest star that we can see with the naked eye. So if you imagine that bubble that surrounds us, that uh, has a diameter of 10 to 20,000 light years. It, within that bubble, there are 6,000 stars that we can see. But there are way more stars that are really out there that we can't see. And that's because most stars are small. When we look at the night sky, there's a bias there. We tend to see the things that are easy to see. And in the case of astronomy, the things that are easy to see are going to be bright and they're going to be close. So we're not going to see dim stuff and we're not going to see far away stuff. There's, there's a bias in what we can see. Check this out. In the same volume, in that same bubble that's 10 or 20,000 light years across that contains 6,000 stars that we can see, there are actually around 6 billion stars. That's billion with a B, like the true Carl Sagan, billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions, six billion stars in that same bubble. That's 10 to 20,000 light years across, six billion stars. We can only see 6,000 of them. And that's because almost all the stars in our galactic neighborhood, in our part of the Milky Way, are small and dim stars. I mean... Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is the closest star to us. Four light years away, 3.8, whatever the number is, it's around four light years. Can't see it. You can't see it with a telescope. It's too, it's too small. It's too dim. We can't see it. And in fact, our own galaxy, our own Milky Way galaxy, in total is made up of about three quarters of these small stars. Three quarters so small stars. Now, in our neighborhood, it's it's more small stars than normal. If you go to the galactic core, there's more big, bright stars than average, and then all balances out, and it's about three quarters of these small stars. And what's interesting about these stars, well, there's a lot interesting about these stars, don't get me wrong, is that these small stars are red. Why are they red? I mean, you, you, you know that these stars are small, which means they're probably not very hot and they're not emitting a lot of light. But why does that change the color? I mean, and why is it a red thing that's cooler? I mean, we, we, it's, it's easy to figure out why these stars might be cooler overall. If they're smaller, say half the size of the sun, quarter of the size of the sun, a tenth the size of our sun. If they're smaller, then the gravitational pressures that are trying to squeeze that star in are going to be weaker because there's less stuff. That means the fusion reactions that happen in the core are going to be, I mean, still intensely furious. You would literally melt your face off, but it's going to be a little bit more relaxed. It's going to be a little more sedate than in something like our sun or something even bigger. That means uh, less energy release because the fusion rate is far smaller, less energy release that makes it to the surface. And so there's just going to be less light emitted, like less than a percent. Even, I think even less than a tenth of percent of the amount of light emitted by our own sun, emitted by one of these typical uh, small dwarf stars. So it's obviously cooler, less luminous, less intense, but why red? The reason that they're red is because stars shine as almost perfect black bodies. Now, this jargon term, I got to be honest with you, black bodies, black body radiation, you may have heard of it in a few contexts. It is, there are some jargon terms out there in astronomy and physics and all sciences that it's like, I, 
can we just get like a do-over? Can we just name it something else? Because the name is not helpful. The name is not descriptive. The name does not help us know what the heck we're talking about. And there's a few of them I could go down the list, but it black body is probably at the top. Here's the idea. You take a box. It, it can be any box. It doesn't matter. And you paint the insides black. So it's all perfectly absorbing. Like it's all super black in there. And then you heat it up. I don't, I'm, you know, you can figure out yourself how to do this, how to make a box. And you just make it hot. You make a really, really, really hot box. And you poke a tiny, tiny hole right in the middle, right in the side. And you look through that hole. And there's going to be light pouring out of that hole. This roughly describes a set of experiments that were done in the late 1800s that were examining the connection between temperature and color. So the light that comes out of this little pinprick hole, the light that comes out is going to be all sorts of different wavelengths of light. There's going to be blue light and red light and infrared and ultraviolet, maybe even x-ray, whatever. And it, it creates a broad spectrum of light of all sorts of different colors mixed together. But one colors or one set of colors are going to be emitted more than the others. There's going to be a peak in the amount of colors. So there's gonna be like a whole lot of blues, wow. And then uh, maybe, you know, just a little bit green, a little bit of red, barely any infrared, and, you know, and then on the other side, a little bit of ultraviolet, and, you know, maybe a tiny, tiny bit of x-ray. Or you might do something else, you might set something else up. And then now it's like tons of red light, lots of red light, and then lots, also lots of infrared, and then not so much, maybe a little microwave, maybe a little, a little radio over here, and then uh, maybe a little bit of green, and then a little bit of blue down, down, down. There's going to be a peak. And what these experiments figured out is that this spectrum of light that's emitted shifts around with temperature. And the hotter the thing, the black body, and, and by the way, this experimental setup was designed so that you only get light emitted by... By like the raw temperature of the object itself. Like, like anything that's made of atoms and molecules, all our atoms and molecules are, are vibrating around constantly. They're flexing, they're bending, and they're, they're jiggling. And all that motion generates light. It generates radiation. And there's sometimes there's little tiny wiggles. Sometimes there's really big wiggles. And so sometimes short wavelength radiation is emitted, sometimes long wavelength radiation is emitted. There's all sorts of different wavelengths being emitted. And what these experiments found, these, these black body tests where there's, there's no like spectral emission, you're, you're not getting weird, you know, stray light. Like it's all focused on just what is the connection between temperature in the color of light emitted. These black body experiments confirmed that the hotter a thing is, the more short wavelength light is emitted and short wavelength like this high energy stuff, that's the blues, that's the ultraviolets, that's the hard stuff. And if something's cooler, it's going to emit longer wavelength radiation. It's going to do reds and infrareds. If something's right in between where it actually peaks in the green in the rainbow, that means you're getting equal amounts of blue over here, equal amounts of red, and it's going to shine white, be white hot. This applies to all so all sorts of things. So uh, like people, people are 98.6 degrees. Why did I suddenly forget how hot uh, the human body is? It's 98.6, I think. Anyway, uh, we're black body radiators. We emit black body radiation. There's, there's radiation flowing off me right now. And most of it at 98 degrees, that corresponds to a peak in the infrared. So it's not really visible light. It's mostly infrared light. And that's why if you put on infrared goggles, it looks like people are glowing because we're literally emitting infrared radiation right now. Stars add a thousand, a few thousand Kelvin. The stars like our sun are going to be whitish, a little bit yellowish, whitish, depending on the elemental mix. But they emit as black bodies. A star that's smaller, a few thousand Kelvin uh, cooler is going to shift its light down into the red. And so that is the, that's, that's why small stars are red. And that's also why big giant stars 
uh, are the bright ones are blue. Now there's also giant red ones. Those are because they're big, but they're also cool on the surface. So it's, it's not necessarily about size, the connection between temperature and color. Uh, or size and color. It's not necessarily about the connection between size and color. It's between temperature and color. So you can have giant stars, the red giants that are cool on their surface. The small stars, the, the little guys are going to be red dwarfs, not just any dwarfs. They're going to be red dwarfs. And why are these red dwarfs more common in the universe? Because it's easy to make small things. If you're going to have a big giant blob of gas and you're going to decide to start making stars and it's just going to, pieces of the gas are going to pinch off, collapse down under their own weight uh, and to trigger nuclear uh, fusion in their cores, it's just easier to make a small blob of gas do that than a big giant. You got to get all these pieces of dust and gas and molecules together and make a big giant star. It's like way easier to pop out lots of little stars. It's easier for the universe to manufacture little stars. So, red dwarf stars are the most common kind of star in the universe. It's a shame we can't see them because the night sky would look pretty intense. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, uh, hit like, and then uh, feel free to comment, ask me questions, go to patreon.com slash subscribe if you want to. Uh, you're your own boss.